join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello, as friends. In this video, uh, we are going to understand one ideology that I have chosen from the discussion that we had uh, in the last part. There you saw that we made a distinction between left and right. And there, that division actually also classified the ideologies or political ideologies. So as you might be knowing that you have a complete set of ideologies that you have to study in paper one, section A. I have chosen liberalism and I'm going to discuss the most essential, you can say the most foundational understanding you can expect here in this video, you can expect to know that what liberalism actually means, what in essence it, it actually means. Okay, so as you know, the purpose of the whole series is to help you to develop certain um, background understanding of, of the subject that you have chosen. So that even if you're a non backgrounder, uh, the full fledged, uh, fledged upcoming foundation course is not going to be a problem for you. Okay, so that is the whole purpose. So let's see liberalism then. What actually it means, what in a sense liberalism means. One thing that you should notice or you should take note of at the outset is this, that when it comes to liberalism, this political ideology or the idea of liberalism, you can say has been the most profoundly powerful idea that has shaped Western political tradition. It is so, so intrinsic to Western tradition that liberalism is identified with Western civilization. Okay. Now, after a time, in modern times, after a time, it has started spread, spreading outside the world also. Okay. So outside of the Western uh, turf, it has started spreading and started engulfing the whole world. So much so that theorists like Francis Fukuyama, you might have heard this name. Francis Fukuyama opined or he argued that this last century, 20th century, had culminated with the final and global triumph of, of liberalism over any other idea. So what Fukuyama actually meant by that, that end of history thesis that he came up with in the last decade of the last century, what he was actually saying was this, that when you consider liberalism, then it suggests or it, it actually favors market capitalism to be the basis of economic organization and liberal democracy to be the basis of political organization. Okay, so while Fukuyama was making that statement with respect to liberalism, what he meant was this, that all the alternatives of market capitalism, when it comes to economic organization of any, any entity, and all the alternatives of liberal democracy, when it comes to political organization of any entity, they have collapsed. And that has led to the final and global triumph of liberalism. So now this is the argument that he made in the last decade is starting of the last decade of the last century. Now in retrospect, it has been more than 30 years now, in retrospect, you find that argument quite far fetched because you are, you are seeing that liberalism as an ideology, as an idea is facing opposition from so many other ideas and so many, many kinds of crises are there in liberal societies also. So whether it has whether the last century had culminated with the final triumph of liberalism, uh, leading to the collapse of all other alternatives of market capitalism and liberal democracy or not, um, that is another debate. But this final Trump argument, in retrospect, seems to be forfeited, no doubt about that. But still, this unrelenting commitment, this, this remarkable commitment, a uh, profound commitment that you see around the globe for liberalism is, is still something which is quite noticeable. 
Okay, so what makes this idea of liberalism, this ideology, so much attractive? And what it actually means? Okay, so understand that when you see the emergence of liberalism, then in its most incipient form, it was actually an idea or ideology of emerging industrialized or industrial middle class. Okay, we are talking about Europe here. So, idea of industrial middle class that was rising in Europe. And from that point onwards, it actually started, got linked with capitalism. Okay, so capitalism is very much central to this, this, this political ideology. As I said, that market capitalism is the basis of economic organization when it comes to liberalism. Now, as it progressed, it actually also stood against feudalism, particularly feudalism, then also opposed any kind of totalitarianism and also absolutism. Okay, so it was considered the ideology of industrialized West, ideology of industrialized West. Okay, and the kind of the gov government that it actually came to favor by opposing feudalism, totalitarianism, absolutism, was a constitutional government or a representative government. Okay, if you consider the core tenets, the basic tenets of liberalism, then core tenets we have to do individualism, considering individual, individual as, as the center of everything, and concern of individual is quite, quite highlighted here. Rationalism, justice, freedom, toleration. Okay? As I said, very much intrinsic to Western political tradition. Okay? So, what Western political tradition actually is known for? It is known for extolling the values of individualism, rationalism, justice, freedom, toleration. Okay, and as I said, that it started spreading outside Europe also. Some would argue that some of the core or essential tenets of liberalism shape, or if not shape, then actually enrich the core of Indian political tradition also. India is also called the island of liberalism, okay, considering the neighborhood that we have. Okay, so these are the core tenets of, of liberalism. What a liberal society actually looks like? How, what typically are the features of liberal society? So there you see that diversity and pluralism are most noticeable thing. So a liberal society is one which is uh, quite favorable, uh, which provides congenial atmosphere for the diversity of opinions, okay? And also pluralism. If you consider the economic organization, it is, it is very clearly guided by market. The market capitalism is the basis of economic organization. And what about political feature of a liberal society or a liberal entity, any political entity? So politically, it follows liberal democracy. Liberal democracy. Okay? And what liberal democracy actually means is actually a kind of government based on consent and constitutionalism. Okay? As I said, capturing the essence of liberalism, core tenets, the basis of economic organization being market capitalism, the basis of political organization being liberal democracy based on consent and constitutionalism. Okay, opposing absolutism, opposing totalitarianism, opposing uh, any kind of unrestrained absolute authority, having a check over the entity which exercises power. Okay, another core idea that you should take note of when it comes to liberalism is this. That when it comes to people or individuals, as I said, that individualism is one of the core key tenets, liberalism believes on all human beings being equal by birth. So all are by birth equal. All human beings are 
by birth equal. So what liberalism seems to propose is equal moral worth of all individuals. Equal moral worth. This would be contrasted with, with feudalistic mindset which favored privileges. That means rights based on certain ascribed uh, ascriptive identities. For example, uh, identities like caste or religion. Liberalism has not been in favor of some special rights based on an ascriptive identity. Okay? Now, the corollary of this, this, this equal moral worth, this claim, would be that people would be having equal opportunities. There will be formal equality among people. That means no distinction could be made on the basis of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth, like that. No, dis no distinction can be, made on, uh, can be made on any ascriptive identity. That is, identity that you carry by birth. Okay, so these are the things that make liberalism quite an attractive idea. Okay, but one difference that you should take note of while talking about this equality thing here is this. That although according, uh, liberal belief is such that all humans are equal by birth, but then at the same time liberalism also proposes that individuals should be rewarded as per their talent and also as per their willingness to work. Okay? And because of this, liberalism also gets associated with something called meritocracy. So I hope you are getting the most essential points of liberalism. Okay? So even though it, it talks about equal moral worth of all individuals, but then it goes on to say that all individuals should be rewarded as per their willingness to work, as per their talent. Okay. So, it actually talks of equal opportunity, but not equal outcome. Okay. Now, there are various variants of liberalism also. All that you study in quite good detail in your foundation course, but here, the essence of that division I'm going to tell you. So, among those variants, you can see two clear cut divisions. One is classical liberalism and the other is modern liberalism. Now classical liberalism was the first to emerge. So it was quite skeptical of any kind of governmental intervention. So classical liberalism proposed a minimal state and also proposed an economic policy where it saw the state's intervention to be unnecessary, not only that, quite damaging. Okay. While modern liberalism saw state favorably, saw state as an entity which can, um, you can say, solve or you can say, address some of the social evils, can also check upon the ills of unregulated capitalism. So that was the difference between classical and modern liberalism. One good marker of difference can be this, that how they saw freedom. So classical liberals saw freedom in negative sense. That is, they saw freedom as non-interference. That means non-intervention. Freedom means absence of constraints. Okay, so that means a state should not intervene. A state should not, uh, a state should leave things to the people because individuals are largely self-sufficient. That was the perception of classical liberals. While modern liberals saw freedom in positive sense, relating it with, with uh, you can say, progress, relating it with self-enlightenment. And there, because of that, they could see the positive role of a state in enlarging the freedom of individuals. Okay, so a state can come and help people to help people in becoming capable of enjoying freedom. So greater and more favorable role of a state. Okay, so delivering the welfare for the people. And for this reason, again, modern liberalism was also called welfare liberalism. Okay, but there are so many other variants. But this division is quite clear cut. Okay, so this, what you can say liberalism actually means, this is the essence of liberalism. 
the basis of political organization being liberal democracy, the basis of economic organization being market, then seeing a state in both positive as well as negative light depending upon the variant that you choose. Okay. Now after a time what happened that various ideologies or ideas emerged and started attacking liberalism. So that is something that we are going to see in the next part and then in next videos when you will see other ideologies you will see their attack on liberalism and that attack will also go simultaneously with their own evolution further enriching the history as well as the very discipline of political science. Okay, so this is all. We are going to see some other ideology in the next videos. Thank you.